congratulations. You just bought an Xbox X or S or both. Now what? Just buy some Game Pass time and start playing a bunch of games. Easy. Video is done. <sighs> No, not really. The newest generation of Xbox are very capable machines that not only play some of our favorite games, we can also use them to watch Netflix or Disney Plus, Hulu, Peacock, or even like and subscribe YouTube channels. But so can most modern TVs. So if that's all you want it for, maybe just get a TV. In the end, it'll cost less. What really sets gaming consoles like the Xbox apart are the games, and Microsoft has put Xbox in a unique position with a Netflix-style subscription service. Pay once a month and play hundreds of games. So the Xbox is no slouch, regardless of if you bought it as a gift for little Susie and Timmy, a significant other, yourself, or somebody bought it for you. We want to be able to set it up as quickly and easily as possible, so we're going to do that right now. We're going to cover the basic setup, a system tour, user account setup, some of the most popular games, a few of my favorites as well, some essential accessories, and aforementioned subscription services. And ultimately, we're going to finish up with how to keep our family safe while in Xbox's digital domain. That's why I'm here. Whew. Deep breath, everybody. Let's get into the setup. The Xbox consoles take a good amount of space, and they need even more space than you expect. Even the Series S, mostly because they're basically small computers that can get really hot. They literally need to breathe and use that air to cool off. And we can easily fit them into most setups because they can stand up and look good doing it, but they can also lay on their side. Just make sure to put them on the side with the little feet thingies so that they don't slide and the little side vents have plenty of room to move that air out. Next, we need the cables and we'll take the two included cables and plug them into the back of the power and the HDMI spots and then into the power outlet in the wall and the HDMI goes to the TV. The included cables are great and the port on the X and S are both HDMI 2.1 but most TVs only have one, maybe two HDMI 2.1 ports, so it's best to check to be able to get the full bandwidth. There is one more optional cable, the ethernet cable. I highly recommend it, but not every room is wired for ethernet, so both Xbox consoles come built in with Wi-Fi. Last up is the USB-A or rectangle to USB-C, the oval or oblong, the new one. It goes to the controller right there. I do like to do the initial setup with the cable because it automatically syncs, but it doesn't charge the standard controller, which normally runs on AA batteries, if it's not plugged in. See this button right here? There's a little button right here that allows for us to sync it with the Xbox. There's another one that's right on the bottom right-hand corner. Press those at the same time, they start blinking rapidly, and everything syncs. We can turn the console on with the little Xbox button right in the middle, and hold our breath while we make sure it all works. If it doesn't automatically come up, Try switching inputs on your TV. And we have power. The Xbox will walk us through some basic sub steps, but first it wants us to sign into their app on your phone. It's completely free and it really does make the setup process much easier. It allows us to configure our Xbox for our Wi-Fi and to set up our Discord account, basic settings, linking, everything, right? We can skip this app by pressing the menu button with the three little lines on the controller and do it all manually on the Xbox. I personally recommend using the app. It makes everything super simple. So we have our user accounts, our Wi-Fi, our ethernet. We have to download some updates and then another update and then controller updates and then sign user agreements and sign away our rent money and our lunch money. I've already done this for my console, but the process is really self-explanatory and it kind of walks you through it. There's a lot of options and Xbox wants to walk you through those quickly. I do highly recommend that parents create accounts on account.microsoft.com slash family slash home, and then use that same email address and password to import the account over. It's a lot easier to type on a keyboard and then try and type with a controller or on your phone. If you already have a Microsoft account, that's how it works, and you can use that on a Windows computer, it's the exact same account. Once this is done, if we put batteries in the controller, we'll have more than enough juice for the next bit, so we can unplug it. Look, we're already synced up and we're good to go. Now we can tour the system. The Xbox dashboard leaves something to be desired. Maybe it's less ads, maybe it's more functionality or transparency, but regardless, it's still fairly straightforward. We have our last few games and applications we've launched at the top, then the Xbox store underneath it on the left and some suggestions beside it. I generally ignore those, but they can be pretty annoying.
If we press the Xbox button on our controller, it brings up our quick menu on the left. We've already seen our home, then our games and our apps below it, and our recent list. Notifications, Game Pass, Store, Search, Volume, they're all on the bottom. Using the left and right bumpers will let us navigate the tabs on the top. From left to right is Home, then People, Parties and Chat, Game Activities, Captures, Shares, and last on the far right is the most useful tab, Profile and Systems, which includes our profile management, settings, and customization. Going down to settings, under general settings, we have network settings for wired and wireless, TV, sound, online safety, and family, which I'll touch on at the end. And then we have personalization. Hidden in here is my home Xbox, which you probably already did during the initial setup. If selected, this lets anyone else signed into this Xbox to play your purchased games, not your saves, including all Game Pass games. So one person buying Game Pass can share it with the whole family on this Xbox. Under account, we have subscriptions and payments, social accounts like Twitter, Steam, Twitch, and Discord. I guess Twitter's X, but that's just weird to say, which Discord's super important for online gaming now. Privacy and safety, and then additional family settings and content restrictions. There is a ton of options here and worthy of a video in and of itself for each of these tabs. Typically, the Xbox gives itself some standard plug and play settings when you're first setting it up. Uh, and it also asks you a ton of different questions. Check the description below as I will update it with links to new videos, explaining more and more options within the settings and the Xbox menu. One of the things that I absolutely wanna stress is family settings because if you're in a family of gamers, then you need to be able to say what's appropriate for different people with different accounts. Family settings is the way to do it. It is very easy to do on the Xbox. However, again, you can do it on the account.microsoft.com com slash home slash family and set those settings up there. I use that because my kids are also on PC at the same time. If you're only using the Xbox, the Xbox app should be more than enough to help you set it up. And we'll have another video explaining that. Under the system tab with storage devices, we have transferring of their data. If you or somebody else is already gonna be playing on this Xbox and they've already played on a different Xbox or previous generation, there are ways to transfer your data locally and via the mystical cloud. If we connect our Xbox to the internet and it connects to the Xbox network, it'll save our games to the cloud automatically. We can sign into another machine and pick up where we left off. And the best part is you don't need the subscription. It's just part of being on Xbox. It won't store all the game add-ons or all the game files, the arcade content, whatever. It's just the save file. So they have to have the game on their system, but you can pick it up and play it there. If we're playing on an older Xbox One or Xbox 360, those games can be saved on an external hard drive and plugged in via one of those USB 3.0 slots we saw earlier. However, games optimized for the Xbox Series X and S need to be stored on the internal SSD, and those need to be installed. This feels like we should just keep talking about essential accessories. Yes, both the internal and external storage for the Xbox are in my top five. Uh, running out number five is the internal storage. It's this little card thing that slides into the back and it's incredibly expensive, like prohibitively expensive for most people. However, you can store extra Xbox Series X and S optimized games on it because it reads so fast. On the other hand, if you're just playing the Xbox One or Xbox 360 games, just put it on an external drive and plug that into the USB port. That's super cheap and easy, and that is my preferred method. And that's why number four for me is just picking up an external hard drive and plugging that into the USB 3.0. It's super cheap. Like, those things are ridiculously cheap right now. Coming in at third place is a headset. I love gaming on a headset, especially a good one. Xbox has licensed a couple of third-party ones that are really good for what they deliver. The cheapest is grabbing a decent pair of any type of wired headphones with a microphone and just plugging it into the controller down here within that little slot. Why is that a good idea? Well, that's a really smart question. Glad you asked. One, sometimes not everyone wants to hear your game, Timmy, so put headphones on. And two, not everyone wants to hear you talk about what happened at school or work today, Susie. So again, use a microphone and headphones. And three, it's easier to tell where things are going on and coming from within a video game when you have really good headphones that tell you like where it's coming from. It's kind of hard to do with a TV or like that bar speaker. My top brand right now is SteelSeries. Uh, I don't really recommend tech on this channel, but let me know down in the comments below because I've got a couple of different ones. 
Coming in at number two is the official play and charge kit for the controller. I have no idea why Microsoft keeps the AA battery thing going. I really, really despise that part of the controller lifecycle for Xbox. The controllers are absolutely amazing and these things are awesome. They last forever. And because I like playing with my wife and my kids, my number one accessory is to have a second controller and maybe a third or a fourth controller. Big families are getting expensive. There are the Elite controllers and some third-party controllers. I'd really recommend if you have a big gamer, look at Scuff. I still have my Elite 1.0 controller here and I love how it feels, but I've also RMA'd or returned this thing for repairs twice now. And I've heard the Elite 2.0s have some hit or miss stuff with the joysticks. This one still just feels a little off on that joystick. An honorable mention here is going to be console covers and stickers. Although I really like the whole blackout thing. And I had a whole, I had a thing going for a while with all my consoles just completely blacked out. It's, it's a thing. Now I want to do a whiteout of all my consoles and that's for the next setup. But being able to easily change the color is amazing. And it makes the room feel a little bit more updated and you. Those are pretty cheap. So just look on Amazon. There's a couple of them, super easy to get a couple. I really want to talk about games, but we have to talk about one more topic and we have to talk about it first because it will lead us into the games. Xbox has hundreds of games available on Game Pass, including day one releases from their AAA studios that are published by Microsoft. That now includes Activision and Blizzard, but not everything's on the cheapest tier. Xbox did kind of simplify their tiers and now we have Game Pass PC, Game Pass Core, which is multiplayer for console, and then we have Game Pass Console and Game Pass Ultimate. Microsoft really doesn't advertise Game Pass for console as much, but I can kind of explain that here in just a second. Okay, so we got to talk about the price because Xbox Game Pass Core, which is the multiplayer, is 10 bucks a month or 60 bucks a year, but you only get 25 games, but you do get the online multiplayer. Where Xbox Game Pass Console is 11 bucks a month for over 100 games, but it isn't as many as their next tier and also doesn't include access to online multiplayer. So really, Core and Console together give us all the online features we expect for Game Pass, and that's a whopping 20 bucks a month or 120 bucks a year. It's kind of just doesn't make sense. There has to be a better option, right? There is another one called Xbox Game Pass PC, which you can see right here. I have that as well. And it's not intended for console players at all. And it's also 10 bucks a month or 60 bucks a year. So why am I talking about all three of those? Well, because you can get all three of them tied into Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, which combines everything. And it adds a couple additional benefits on top, right? The biggest, the biggest one that I like to talk about is the cloud gaming, which is pretty cool. You can just stream games from the cloud. As long as it's not too resource intensive, it actually plays pretty well. It also now is going to include your EA subscription service for PC and day one releases of Activision and Blizzard games like the new Call of Duty. It weighs in at a very hefty 17 bucks a month with no annual options. There are three month subscriptions available on Amazon for about 45 bucks, so you get $2 off. But this is, that's expensive for a subscription service. So I personally have Ultimate because I found a way to get it really, really super cheap. It comes out to about six to seven bucks a month. That video is linked down in the description below. I love my Game Pass. They're working towards making gaming as accessible as possible for as many different people on as many different platforms. So PC, console, mobile, yes, even mobile. And I'm excited to see what the future looks like for Game Pass, but I'll have to make another video on that soon. I also don't want people to get the wrong level of Game Pass if they're gonna get it, because Ultimate's not for everybody. And maybe you're only on console, and maybe you only wanna play games, but you don't wanna play online. So that'd be Xbox console instead of Xbox core, right? Anyway, let's go on and let's actually talk about the games now. This is the fun part. This is where we actually wanna do the good things, right? Because Xbox has a large library of games and has been buying up more and more studios. There's everything from 2D side scrollers like the classic Sonic and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles to the newest AAA games. We got Call of Duty is now coming out, Madden, Elden Ring. And while I'm making this video, I checked the library and there's 506 games on the ultimate tier for console players. Now, not all of them are great, but I'm sure 
you've heard a few of them. And there's also the free to play games like Fortnite and Apex Legends and stuff like that. <sighs> there are not any really strong exclusive titles to speak of for Xbox, but there are some really strong older series that fans are hoping for good news. Gears of War just announced that Emergence Day is going to come out. And the new Call of Duties, again, are going to be on Game Pass Ultimate for free. Um, and there's more going into that. It appears that Xbox isn't as big about having console exclusives as their competitors are, and they think that the value is to bring gamers and families into that Netflix-style subscription model for Game Pass. Try dozens of games. If you really like them, you can buy them at a discount. This includes an amazing collection of games that range from couch co-op to family-friendly to single-player narrative games and online multiplayer focus like Fortnite, Call of Duty, and sports games, right? I personally love the Halo series. I love Gears of War. Uh, Forza Motorsports is pretty good, but there's there's other stuff that, uh, when it comes to Xbox, like being able to pull up a Paw Patrol game for my young kids is fantastic. I have Minecraft Java for free with this. I got discounts on all of Minecraft because of my Xbox Game Pass, so my kids all have Minecraft and we can play that locally and safe. I've got Stardew Valley for free on Game Pass. I've got little games like A Short Hike. There's tons of little indie games and fun games that don't take a long time, but they're very calm and relaxing or they're very just interesting games. And I really think that's part of what makes Game Pass very, very, very compelling. Okay, I do get it though. I need to make a video recommending games for kids and teens and adults, and I'll start working on that, but only if you promise to come back and watch it. So leave a comment saying that you're gonna come back and watch it. Okay, there really are a ton of games and so many opportunities to go online. There's a web browser, there's all these apps, there's ways to spend extra money on the Xbox, and we didn't intend for all that. And even if we browse the internet and watch videos, it's, it's okay for us, but we gotta be careful for our kids. And that's why parental controls are so important. And if we're gonna go have our family getting into the digital forest with lions and tigers and bears, thank you for saying, oh my, we need to set them up for success. Parental controls will set spending limitations and restrictions and allow certain games while blocking others. We gotta regulate who our kids can talk to and what they can see and do online on the Xbox. That's why I recommend that you watch this video right here and set up the parental controls on your Xbox. Don't forget to change your default passcode. Do good, play hard, game on, and I'll see you next time.